<laughs> After the tribulation. <laughs> uh, uh, good afternoon. <laughs> good afternoon. After the tribulation. I'm just being reminded of that disgusting, uh, filthy, uh, sodomite Stephen a Anderson. Um... <laughs> <laughs> the wicked devil that he is. And he did that after the tribulation. After the tribulation. <laughs> what a devil. Hello. Hello. Um, please get your authorized version of the scriptures. And please read along with me in the scriptures we will be looking at today. Please read along with me word for word, verse by verse of what we're going to be reading and considering today. Okay, please read along with me. Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Read along with me, because my mouth goes qu quicker than my brain, and vice versa most of the time, okay? Read along with me. Read along with me, okay? From the scriptures, the authorized version. There is coming what is scripturally referred to as the redemption of the purchased possession. Okay, that is when we, the body of Christ, get caught up into caught up into the clouds to be with the Lord. Okay, uh, it is erroneously referred to as the pre-tribulation rapture. Okay, the rapture is not in the scriptures at all. You're right. When uh, people attack the redemption of the purchase possession. Uh, they say, well, rapture isn't in the scriptures. You're right, it isn't. But the redemption of the purchase possession is, okay? And uh, people like to go to Matthew 24 to try to teach you and tell you that the body of Christ is going to be going through the time of Jacob's trouble, which these people like to refer to as the Great Tribulation. The Any of you... Any of you out there, from the authorized version of the scriptures, show me, give me the verse in the comment section, please. And I'll give you a thousand dollars of money I don't have. If you can show me the verse in scripture, the authorized version, where it says, the... Great Tribulation. Put it in the comment section. And I'll give you a thousand dollars of money I don't have. Okay? All right? Okay? <laughs> Matthew 24 is describing, talking about what is called the time of Jacob's trouble. Who is Jacob? Israel. Okay? The body of Christ is not on the earth in Matthew chapter 24, okay? The body of Christ is not, this is not for the body of Christ. Matthew 24 doctrinally has absolutely nothing to do with us today at all, okay? At all. It's for the time of Jacob's, Israel's trouble. Okay, and you know what's interesting? When you read Matthew chapter 24, and, and this is in a lot, a lot of scriptures, okay? This is why you don't always trust the cross-references, okay? Because in the cross-references here, okay, and you, you see this in 2 Thessalonians, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Okay, you see this where they try the people who do the cross reference like to tie in, like for example, 1 Corinthians 15, where Paul's talking about the redemption of the purchased possession, and tie it in with Matthew chapter 24. <clears throat> no, no, they are two totally different things entirely. Entirely. Okay, that's why, excuse me. That's why when it comes to the cross-references in Scripture, uh, sometimes they're good, sometimes they're not. Okay, and, and, uh, and our dear brother uh, Alexander B. Hartley can also testify and talk to you about this as well. 
Uh, you don't always trust the um, cross-references, okay? Because like I said, I have seen in sets of scriptures where they try to tie in the redemption of the purchased possession with Matthew 24. No. No. Okay? No. No. Matthew 24 has nothing to do with us doctrinally today. The body of Christ is not going to be going through the time of Jacob's trouble. But, dear friend, Christians are going to be going through the great tribulation. <laughs> Twit, Stephen Anderson. I, I wouldn't say that to his face because that guy has like loaded guns and he'd probably beat the snot out. I, I would. I would. I'd go home quicker. But, okay. But anyway, after the tribulation. After the tribulation. They call that the post-tribulation rapture. Like, you go up, and then you'd like do one of these. Ooh, come right back down. Like, stupid. Stupid. Okay? Anyway. 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 Uh, there will be links in the description box for you. If I can find my pen. There it is. Write these down. Um, beg your pardon. Beg your pardon. Austin. Uh, Links in the description box for you about the redemption of the purchased possession, okay? Anyway, Matthew chapter 24, <laughs> verses 29 on to verse 35. <laughs> Immediately after the tribulation of those days, those days, the days of Jacob's trouble, okay? Shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign, because the Jews require a sign. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes, oh, like the twelve tribes of Israel, okay, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. I have yet to hear of anybody disputing that this is the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? This is, but obviously, even these whack jobs like Stephen Anderson it's like, okay, that, that's the second coming. That's, uh, that's plain as the nose on my face, okay? That's, that's the second coming, okay? But Revelation chapter, uh, chapter 1, just one verse. Revelation chapter 1, okay? And here's, the, and here's where the difference is, okay? Revelation chapter 1, just one verse. Verse 7. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. Every eye. Everybody's going to see the Lord coming at his second coming. And see, what differs is, in the redemption of the purchased possession, not everybody's going to see or hear him. I personally believe that everyone's going to hear something. Okay? We saints, in a, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, we're going to hear our names all of us at the same time, so this is what I personally believe, okay, that we're all going to hear our name, hey, come up here, and we're all going to go, okay, we who are the saints, the body of Christ, the church of the living God. I believe that others are going to hear something like a sound of thunder, and that is verified in scripture, okay, when the Lord was going into Jerusalem, and um, the, the disciples heard uh, the voice from heaven, but others thought that it thundered. I think the same principle is going to be there for the redemption of the purchased possession. Point being, not everyone is going to like it. And, and, and uh, what's that? Um, oh, oh, um, oh, what was that movie? Left Behind, where they watched people slowly rise up to go to heaven, and everyone saw the redemption. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no. And remember about the left behind thing? He had that Lafayette guy, or whatever his crazy name was. Um, he, he had in his story the Pope being... <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think perhaps maybe. No, 
Okay? <laughs> I think perhaps maybe no. A pope. A pope. You know what? Devilment, what vile evil it takes for someone to be a pope. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's that's <laughs> that's just laughable. That that is laughable. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Fine. Yes. Yes. Uh, the impossible is possible with God. But if you if someone's reached the point of a pope, uh, you're 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 pretty well gone. <laughs> Is it impossible? No, but anyway, anyway. Point being, the redemption of the purchased possession, not everyone's going to see. I believe everyone's going to hear something. We, like I said, we saints, we're going to hear, come up here, and we're up. Others are going to hear it thunder. That's what I believe. We can verify that through scripture, and we've done that in other videos, which I'll try to remember in the description box, okay? But the point is, at the second coming, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him. And all the kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so. Amen. Zechariah. Zechariah, chapter 12. Zechariah, chapter 12. Zechariah, chapter 12. Verses, I have written down verses 9 on to verse 10, but we'll read to the close of the chapter, okay? Because it says uh, that uh, everyone's going to, uh, I close the scriptures, <laughs> to Revelation chapter 1, verse uh, 7, but it says there, come on, fingers, work with me. Well worn in set of scriptures, this one is becoming, okay? Revelation 7, uh, 1, verse 7. And all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Everyone's going to see him. But, specifically, Zechariah chapter 12, verses 9, on to verse uh, 14, close. And it shall come to pass in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. And when he comes back at his second coming with the sword out of his mouth, the scriptures, okay, Read about that in Revelation chapter 19. Okay. And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the lowercase s, imparted, spirit of grace and of supplications. And they shall look upon me whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son, and shall be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. Those Jews, those Hebraic Jews, not these Hamites or Japhethites, okay? Those Hebraic Jews, midway during the time of Jacob's trouble, I believe that when that man of sin, the son of perdition, the abomination that maketh death desolate, walks into the third rebuilt temple, he's going to be looking, having the visage of the Roman Catholic Jesus, I believe, and he's going to go into that third temple and say, I am. And the Hebraic Jews who haven't taken that mark of the beast are going to be like, oh boy, uh-oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, <laughs> wait a minute. Okay, and hence too, that is why in uh, Matthew chapter 24 here, uh, where it says, uh, um, yeah, in verses 15 on to verse uh, 21 in Matthew 24, when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. What does that mean? That man of sin, the son of perdition. Okay, that man who has Satan dwelling within him, what does that say? Stand in the holy place, the third rebuilt temple, okay? Then let them which be in America. <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't resist. I'm sorry. <laughs> then let them which be in Judea. Judea. This is for so. Wait a minute, you you nut jobs out there who want to believe that Matthew chapter twenty four has been talking about the body of Christ. So what? Every single one of us of the body of Christ is going to go flee to Ju Judea over there. There's the 
there are people out there who actually believe that. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the fields return back to take his clothes. Remember Lot's wife? Huh? And woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. Hmm, the Sabbath day. Now, uh, don't listen to these crazy whack shop Seventh-day Adventists, okay? Um, the Sabbath is not mandatory to the Jew first, and also to the Greek, the Greek, the Greek is a Gentile, in this dispensation, salvithically, okay? It is not a requirement for salvation for anyone, the Jew first and also the Gentile, to observe the Sabbath in this dispensation. The Sabbath was a sign specifically for the Jews, the Hebraic Jews, not the Hamites, and definitely not the Seventh-day Adventists. Hey, which was created by a woman? Warning! Warning! Danger, Will Robinson! <laughs> you know, not, you know, I've, I've talked with Seventh-day Adventists. I've, a uh, little rabbit here, uh, I have had cordial cordial discourses with uh, Seventh-day Adventists. Uh, not all of them, but cordial. I have had cordial discussion with the uh, Seventh-day Adventists, with some of them that I've talked to. Um, when you bring up the fact to them that, you know, uh, White, Ellen G. White, you know, was the one who basically, basically uh, was, had a hand in coming up with the Seventh-day Adventist religion cult that exists today, um, that, that unfortunately has turned conversations into unpleasant ones. Just saying. Just saying. Okay? Just saying. All right? The Sabbath is not a mandatory thing, requirement for salvation to the Jew first and also to the Gentile today. If you want to do the Sabbath, go, go right ahead. Go, go right ahead. Okay, we've talked about that recently. Go go right ahead, man. Knock yourself out. Is it a requirement for salvation today in this dispensation? No. No. It is not. But it will be, again, during the time of Jacob's trouble. And the Sabbath was a sign between the Jews. And I do believe the reference for that is in Ezekiel chapter 22, don't quote me on that. If I'm wrong, please, brother, especially someone, correct me in the comment section. Okay? But let's continue. Okay? But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. Okay? For then shall be great tribulation. There's great. Brad! The great tribulation. That was, that's my challenge to any of you. Okay, that's my challenge to any of you. Yeah, great tribulation right there. Bravo, bravo. I'll, get, I'll send you a bozo button later, okay? Yeah, notice what it doesn't say. The great tribulation. Okay, nice try. For then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. Yes, the time of Jacob's trouble is going to be horrific. It's going to make the Holocaust of the Jew look like nothing. The times that are coming when the body of Christ is off of the earth and Satan is allowed to have free reign to do as he will for judgment's sake without the body of Christ on the earth, our, our, I mean, we have it written down what's, what it's going to be like, but the horror, the terror, the, the just abomination, the destruction, the devastation. It's hard to, it's hard to imagine. 
Well, I mean, we can, we can believe it because it's written down for us here in the Scripture. It's hard to imagine. And those of you who are veterans of war, I mean, the time that is coming, the time that is coming. And then see, you, you got these idiots, the, the fake gracers, who's like, well, during that time, it's by grace through faith. No. no, 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 no. You Christians who get left behind believing that nonsense, you're, you're doomed. You're doomed. Okay? Get saved. Get saved. Okay? The Lord that the Lord dwell in you and he make you a saint of the church of God. And then we can get out of here and let the Christians go through it. Give me a break. Zechariah chapter 12. Again. V uh, reading verse 10 again. And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplications. And they shall look upon me whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son, and shall be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn son. And in that day there shall be great mourning in Jerusalem as the mourning of, of let me see, Hadad Rimon in the valley of Migidon, and the land shall mourn every family apart. The family, now pay attention. The family of the house of David apart. David. David. Judah. Is it not obvious that our Lord sprang from Judah? Reference, you know, the tribe that David was. The house of, the, of David apart and their wives apart. The family of the house of Nathan apart and their wives apart. Hebrews, the family of the house of Levi apart and their wives apart, the family of Shimei apart and their wives apart, the fa all the families that remain, every family apart and their wives apart. Mm. Mm. Okay, back to Matthew chapter 24, verse 31. And this we cover in the two <laughs> captures video, okay, which... Rachman himself taught that there were two, you know. Yes, there are two times in Scripture where the Lord says, come up hither. The redemption of the purchased possession and for Elijah and Moses. And the difference is when he says, come up hither in Revelation chapter 4, 1, it's, that's the redemption of the purchased possession, okay? Uh, not every eye is going to see that. I believe everyone's going to hear it, but we're going to we're going to go up. The second time he says, "Come up hither to Elijah and Moses." Everyone is going to see Elijah and Moses ascend up into heaven, because the Jews require a sign. Okay, all right. So yeah, there are two come up hithers, but there is only one redemption of the purchased possession. There's only one. Okay. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of the trumpet. Uh, and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather his elect, not the Calvinists. <laughs> okay. Elect here in context is reference onto the Hebraic Jews. Okay? The Hebraic Jews. All right? And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to another. Okay? What this is, is when we come back down with our Lord Jesus Christ, we go up with him, we come back down with him. We, the body of Christ, the saints, are his army that's backing him up when we come back down. Okay? But when we go back, when we go up and we come back down, he's going to send us out to get his people and bring them in. Okay? That's what that's talking about. That's it's not a uh U-turn stupid uh post-tribulation rapture, okay, or any nonsense like that. No, no. We come back down with our Lord. He said, Hey, go get those, go get my legs. Like, okay, we go get them and bring them in, okay? That's what that's talking about. Okay? That's what that's talking about. 
Be careful with that. Again, in the description box, the two raptures. Okay, well, go ahead if you have questions. Okay, and if you don't want to watch them, and bop, 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 the Lord rebuke you, shut up, I ain't got time for you. Okay, it's there for you to behold. You don't want to do it, that's your problem, not mine. Verse 32. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. The fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. Mm. Close to being reborn, if you will. Close to being born again, maybe you could say. Hmm. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Verily, I say unto you, this generation shall not pass. This generation shall not pass. That is a specific statement referring on to a specific generation. And in context, he's referring to what? That generation that is in the time of Jacob's trouble. When you see the Lord say this generation, he says that a couple times. It's a reference onto the specific generation that he's addressing. Okay? He says that earlier, but here he's talking about number one. Number one, he's talking to Jews about the time of Jacob's trouble. And number two here, so likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is, even, that it is near even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Now, was he talking about the very generation he was addressing personally at the time when he spake this? No, because if that were the case, then all of this stuff would have been fulfilled already, which is something that Catholics like to uh, uh, weave into that, okay? No, he's a this generation here that he's talking about is that specific generation that is going to be in, going through the time of Jacob's trouble, which I do personally believe that generation is at least, at least beginning to manifest itself. Okay? All right? Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. His word, he's going to speak his word, and it's not going to return back to him null and void. Okay? So, the fig tree. The fig tree. Matthew chapter 21. I have yet to encounter. I'm sure they're out there. The, them, them black Hebrew Israelite people are really crazy. Uh, they, they come up with some really, really um, colorful ways to try to weave their heresy and deceive so many of the dear Hemetic people. Uh, they, they really do. They, and... Um, the closest I've come to someone actually denying that the seeing, watching, hearing that the fig tree is synonymous with Israel came from some black Hebrew Israelites. Those that, look, look, you go ahead and call me and kindred this all day and all night. Listen, listen, if you're a Hamite, you're not a Hebrew. It's impossible. Okay. You can be a Jew. Sure you can. Okay. Scripturally, when the uh, scripture says Jew, it's equated onto the Hebraic people, okay? There are incidences where the, in, in uh, Esther where people became Jews who were not Hebrews, yes. And what is a Jew, if I can remember? Okay, what is a Jew? What is a Jew? <laughs> okay, which really irritated a lot of people. Um, we'll be in the description box for you, okay? Listen, listen. Scripturally, someone who is a Jew is someone who's going after the law. Okay, under the law, that kind of thing. Okay? But, in Scripture, the Jew and Hebrew are intertwined with some very rare exceptions. Okay? So, yes, a Hamite, a Japhethite can be a Jew putting themselves under the law. But you see, here's the thing. No Hamite, no Japhethite 
and not all of Shem, like uh, the Asiatics, such as the Chinese, the Korean, the Japanese, the Vietnamese, the Mongolians, that kind of stuff, okay? They're Shemites, but they're not Hebrews. The Hebrew people came out of Shem. That's what Hebrew is, being caught, you know, passing over, coming out. I mean, the very first reference of Hebrew in Scripture is equated with Abram or Abraham. I, 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 he was called that uh, before he was Abraham, but the same person, okay? All right? Listen. Dear Hemetic individual, whoever you are, you're not a Hebrew. It's impossible. You're not. You are not a Hebrew Israelite. It's, you're not. You're not. You're a liar, and you're deceiving yourself, and you're deceiving your kindred. The Lord rebuke you. The Lord rebuke you. And hey, you wicked twits over there. Uh, some of you, not all of you, beloved brethren in England, but there are, I know of a few, uh, English, uh, Hebrew, Israelites who believe the exact, you know, the same thing as the black Hebrew Israelites. But hey, it's the people in England. You're not Hebrews either. Okay? You're not Hebrews. Get over yourself. Get over yourself. Okay? But, like I said... It's very hard to equate the fig tree without being a reference onto Israel. Basically, everyone kind of accepts and acknowledges, yes, the fig tree is synonymous with Israel. Okay? Uh, uh, replacement theology heretic Stephen Anderson believes that. Even uh, Roman, even Satan and his uh, church, the Church of Satan Rome, believe that. Okay? All right? Ishmael, Ishmaelites even believe that. Okay? There are atheists that even know that, well, yeah, that's talking about Israel. Okay? So that is not the question of the fig tree. What is the question of the fig tree is exactly, uh, and like I said, there are many out there who are replacement theology. Replacement theology is basically that the body of Christ has replaced Israel as the apple of God's eye, as God's chosen people. <laughs> heresy, okay, heresy. Roman Catholicism is replacement theology, okay? Um, uh, Islam is replacement theology. Well, and it seems a lot of the, what are they called, um, um, IFB, um, Independent Fundamental Baptists, Apparently, a lot of them appear to be also uh, replacement theology as well. Okay? The question of the fig tree is not, is it Israel? The question is, does it mean that is that God is done with Israel? Therein lies the rub. And therein also lies the fact that most of you are ignorant of Scripture. And again... That is how the devils are able to deceive you people because you're made to trust in a guy or a, or a woman who has a piece of paper on their wall and you're not taught or told or encouraged to search the scriptures yourselves. Okay? The ignorance of God's word is one of Satan's strongest weapons. And when it comes to this thing about replacement theology and the fig tree, it, it's, it's profound, okay? Because if some of you people would search the scriptures, instead of sitting there drooling as if you're being entertained, Matthew 21, verses 18, under verse 20. Now in the morning as he returned into the city, he hungered. And when he saw a fig tree in the way, a singular fig tree. Remember that thing we just said to you about the generations? When the Lord talks about that, he's addressing specifics. Okay? <laughs> yeah, our Lord is very specific. Yeah, yeah. You read about the construction of the tabernacle and the ark. <laughs> Don't tell me that our God is not a God of specificity. Okay, give me a break. Give me a break, pal. Okay. And when he saw a fig tree in the way, 
He came to it and found nothing thereon, but leaves only. And he said unto it, Let no fruit grow on thee henceforth, henceforward forever. To that a fig tree. And presently the fig tree withered away. And when the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, How soon is the fig tree withered away? Now, look at the verses. A fig tree. Question. Question. <laughs> um, I, I could, we could go to Jewel right now and pay an arm and a leg and a firstborn, uh, but we could pick up figs at Jewel. Okay? Question. Were all the fig trees withered up, dried away? Hmm? No. It says a, a singular fig tree. A singular fig tree. That's important. That's important to remember. Okay? Matthew 23, which describes, which describes the spiritual climate before the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? You keep that in mind. The Pharisees, the Sadducees, and stuff like that during this time, when he came, when he came here in his first coming onto his own and his own received him not, they were the ones who were to be like, that's the Mashiach. But instead, what did they do? They denied him. There was no fruit. There was no fruit from that specific generation, that specific fig tree. Hence, and presently the fig tree withered away. Okay? Okay? Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11. Verses 20 on to verse 26. Study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Anyway, Mark 11, verses 20 on to verse 26. And in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up by the roots. Hmm. And Peter, calling to remembrance, saith unto him, Master, behold the fig tree, which thou cursest, is withered away. The, now look at that, the fig tree. Were all the fig trees cursed? No. No. No, they weren't. The, a fig tree, the fig tree, singular. Okay? That specific fig tree, yes, but also it was a mention, a reference, a symbol of the present generation of Hebraic Jews when our Lord was first on the earth, who should have recognized whoop, their Mashiach. But like the rich young ruler, good, good master, what good thing should I do that I may inherit the kingdom of heaven? Or, may I, or whatever. And the Lord, Lord's like, why callest thou me good? Because he didn't have eyes to see. It's a reference onto that specific generation. Okay? Let's continue. And Jesus answering saith unto them, Have faith in God. Now, we're, we're going to debunk something because these Pentecostal nut job charismatics with their name it and claim it prosperity nonsense whose faith is in their faith just like the free grace uh, community. <coughs> okay. Oops. All right. <laughs> just like the fake gracers whose faith is in their faith. Okay. A lot of people I've encountered when they, they want to promote this Pentecostal garbage nonsense of believe it and receive it as far as tangible wealth and whatnot. They like this. They like this. 
For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. But let's read now verse 24. Therefore I say unto you, What things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. And this is twisted and contorted and perverted in that. Good shot. <laughs> okay. All right. A lot of the Pentecostal charismatic schizos will come to things like this. And see, what does that do? That exalts you. That exalts your flesh. You are your own little God. And isn't it a coincidence that a lot of them, the uh, Pentecostal guys, the big ones with the, you know, you know, sow a seed of 500 bucks and Lord's bound to give you 5,000 or some nonsense like that. Okay. They teach that you are a little God. Ye are gods in the description box. And of course, <laughs> little Christs, little Christs, right? <laughs> yeah. But these guys teach you that you, you're a little God and that you have the ability to create by things you say. Tony Robbins, that wicked devil, he even teaches stuff like that, okay? Okay? And that is a reflection of the Garden of Eden. Ye shall be as gods knowing good and evil, and also a reflection of Isaiah chapter 14. Uh, well, yeah, Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 on to verse 15, where Satan says the five I wills, I wills, I wills, I wills, I wills. Okay, see, when you have that, you are of your father, the devil. Okay, all right? But see, there's a problem. There's a problem, okay? There's a problem with what these people talk to you and teach you about that. Okay, 1 John chapter 5, and this is where you go, brethren, sisters, this is where you go to begin to debunk this, this heretical teaching, okay? 1 John chapter 5, verses 13 on to verse 15. Okay, hey, 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 Catholic, 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 pay attention, please. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know. <laughs> that ye have eternal life. And that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Catholic. It's, it's in your catechism. The sin of presumption. What your, what your church, the church of Satan teaches you. That you can't know that you're going to heaven. Is in direct contradiction with the scripture. And you believe your traditions over scripture. You poor, wretched, pathetic, sad creature, you. I, I mean that, man. I mean that. It's right. I can't see that. <laughs> I beg your pardon. It's right. It's right there. There are many others about eternal security. Okay? Right. I beg your pardon. Okay? There are many other places. But, you know, when you're sealed, okay, once saved, always saved. Okay. <laughs> All right. You, you're going to heaven. We're going to heaven. I'm going to heaven when I die. My wife's going to heaven when she dies. Okay. The brethren, we're going to heaven when we die. We know this. Your church, the church of Satan, Roman Catholicism teaches contrary to scripture and it's right there. You poor, sad, wretched creature, you. I, I, I pity you, Catholic. I really do. And take that, take that however you will and don't let it hit you in the butt. Okay? Take offense in the gate. I pity you. 
I pity you. Now, and this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Oh, 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 but what do they say to you? God wants you to be wealthy, healthy, and wise. Really? Paul didn't have a, you know, Paul didn't have a certain dwelling place. He was mocked. He was cruelly treated. Okay? All right? Did he have his best life now? now? No. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, the Father on earth, had no place to rest his head. He was homeless, more or less. Okay? All right? You read in Corinthians about what Paul went through. In Galatians, okay? Uh, somehow, I, I equate that unto these idiots who say, that you, you know, you got to stop sinning. Uh, Paul missed that one. Okay? <laughs> and this thing, well, and I've heard some of these guys even say, well, Paul didn't have enough faith. I, I, I have actually heard some of these Pentecostal nut jobs say, well, Paul didn't have enough faith. That's not an exaggeration either. I have heard that. I have heard that. Are you nuts? Are you nuts? But see, what do they do? It's all about you. Christianity, God loves you. One of the biggest satanic lies on earth. Okay? It's all about you. It's all focused on you. Your personal gain. Not death to self and, or death to the world. No, it's all about you. God wants you to have the best things, right? Well, well, well what about Paul? Okay? Look at what he went through. Okay? But, but, see, see, what is the object of these people's thing when they come to Mark chapter 11 and come to verse 23 and 24 and says, God loves you. God's not mad at you. He wants you to have the best in life. Uh, what is it? It's covetousness. It's covetousness. It's all, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. Okay? God, your God is your belly. Okay? And when it comes to, it's a, their foundation is sand. And their angle that they're going at at you is with covetousness. Okay? And when you read Psalm 10, Psalm 10, verses 1 under verse 7. Okay? And, and here's a name it and claim it, nab it and blab it. Or blab it and nab it. Okay? And I, again, the similarities between these Pentecostal whack job, name it and claim it, and these filthy, Fake grace, believe and receive people is astonishing. Well, because they have the same foundation. They have the same father. They come from the same source, Satan. Okay? It's like you, the comparison. You know, the like with the Christian science thing. Okay? Metaphysical mind science. You're not sick. You only think you're sick. You're, you want to be rich? Think you're rich. Okay, it's the same principle that these Pentecostals use <laughs> that the fake racers use. It is. But anyway, Psalm 10, verses 1 under verse 7. Ouch. Why standest thou afar off, O Lord? Why hidest thou thyself in times of trouble? The wicked in his pride doth persecute the poor. Oh, Paul didn't have enough faith. Faith. Like, I almost wretched. He's like, Dude, are you crazy? Uh. Let them be taken in the devices that they have imagined. One man, uh, one man among a thousand have I found, but a woman among all those have I not found. God hath made man upright, but he, but man has sought out many inventions or devices, I, I'm, I'm messing that up and I don't have it in my head to where it's at right now. Someone may correct me, but whatever, okay? Yes, your best life now. Yeah, Satan offers you the world. Just fall down and worship him and he'll give it to you. Look at the Joel Osteens and the Creflo Dollars. I don't even know if he's a name anymore, but that Kenneth Dopeland is. 
Okay, the Joker, she is Joyce Meyer. Okay, uh, it's just crazy. It's crazy. But the object of their faith is their faith, and the whole thing they're about is themselves. That's exactly what Christianity is today. And that, unfortunately, unfortunately, is what this King James Bible believing Christianity is also morphing into. Okay, uh, divided into little factions. Okay, but never mind about that. For the wicked boasteth of his heart's desire, and blesseth the covetous, whom the Lord abhorreth. Look up the word abhor in, in Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Okay, look it up. Okay, it's like that, that, that uh, the bloke was uh, attacking, I've mentioned this before, uh, attacking a, a brother in England. He's like, I don't hate you. I despise you. It's like, you, you vile devil. You know that guy. Can... <laughs> Having, despising something is a little bit worse than hating something. Okay? Abhor, loathe. Those are like the most extreme forms of hatred that you can have. And the Lord abhorreth the covetous. And covetousness is what these guys do. Covetousness is Christianity. Prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. You're in your little high school clique, aren't you? Huh? You and your, your high school buddies there, right? The wicked, through the pride of his countenance, the bodily thing, will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. His ways are always grievous. Thy judgments are far above out of his sight. As for his enemies, he puffeth at them. I'll never be in adversity. God wants me to be well. I'm going to name it and claim it, girl. And another thing for you dear hermetic people, you know, you need to, you know, the there are hermetic, uh, Pentecostal, charismatic women out there who you just do these grotesque. Uh, God, you know, your financial breakthrough is coming. It's like, wow. Wow. You cannot serve God and mammon. Pentecostals serve mammon. <laughs> Period. He has said in his heart, I shall not be moved, because I'm blessed. It's like that disgusting song I heard that one time, years ago. It's my time to find favor. It's my time to be blessed. I can feel the presence of the Lord, and I'm going to get my blessing right now. Oh, a little covetousness there, huh? It's my time to find favor. Shut up. Sorry. But see, that's Christianity. You want to be a Christian, huh? <laughs> Up to dosage there, pal. Okay. All right. Verse 7. His mouth is full of cursing and deceit and fraud. Under his tongue is mischief and vanity. Mischief and vanity. Back to 1 John chapter 5, verse 14. Again. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. His will. His will. Death to yourself. Death to the world. And follow him. Go whithersoever he will have you to go as an ambassador of Christ. Okay? All right? Well, well what's his will? Find out. Gracious people. All right. Let's, uh, let's finish this part up. And if we know that he hear us. And again, you know, these, well, God's answering my prayers. Really? Yeah? Which God? Which one? Which Jesus? Who's answering the prayers? 
Okay? Who? Which one? Okay? All right? And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. And I, you know, looking back in retrospect, praise the Lord that he did not bring to pass um, a lot of the prayers that I had prayed for as a babe, as a novice in ignorance. Thank you, Father, for not answering all my prayers. Thank you. <laughs> okay? Because at the end of the day, you need to, when, you know, when you're praying something, praying for something, you know, like whatever it is, you, you need to consider, is this your will? Okay? And if it is his will, and you're praying according to his will, see, we have assurance that he hears us. Okay? So, go back to Mark chapter 11. So, when you have these people who go to Mark chapter 11 and concentrate on 23 and 24 and try to puff you up as you are your own little God, you're, you're, you're a little Christ, and create, stay away from them. They're lying to you and deceiving to you, deceiving you. Okay? And here's another part that we got to touch on. Because I, I, I remember this, that Eric Lionheart, Lionheart, is an adherent to this as well. And that, that guy's a lost crazy devil heretic. Okay? That guy, that guy's crazy. That guy's crazy. He's stupid. He's stupid. Hey, Eric, you ever see this? You're stupid. You're stupid. And you're a servant of the Vatican saying that America is... And wouldn't you know it, Stephen Anderson. America's Mystery Babylon. Anyone, if they ain't a novice, which Stephen Anderson is not, hey, guys, even Eric Lionheart is not a novice. Okay? He's just, they're working, serving the Vatican. Henry Morris, in his notes, uh, the Henry Morris thing, um, I'm, I'm writing down these, uh, beg your pardon. Uh, in his notes, in the his study Bible, does exactly that. Deflects away from Mystery Babylon being Rome. Okay? Henry Morris. Henry Morris. Okay? Yeah. A creation scientist guy, yes. Similar to Kent Helvin. And as if I'm also not mistaken, doesn't even Kent Helvin detract... As Rome being Mystery Babylon. Okay. When, if they ain't a novice, people. Whenever you meet someone who's going to tell you that Rome is not Mystery Babylon. They're a liar. They're a devil. And they're working for the Vatican. Stay away from them. They have an agenda. They're working for Satan and the Jesuit order. Okay. But. Verses 25 and 26 here. And when ye stand praying, forgive. If ye have aught against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive your trespasses. But if ye do not forgive, neither will your, your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. Hmm. Hmm. So, you have to forgive, and this is on the other channel, uh, I think, where we discuss this. Forgive to be forgiven. Um, question. Hey, free gracer, isn't that a work? It is. It is. See, during the kingdom of heaven, it's all works. Faith is null and void when you can see Jesus Christ on the throne. How many times have we talked about that? How many times have you been told that? Okay? You don't need faith during the kingdom of heaven. Okay? During the kingdom of heaven, it's all works. During the kingdom of heaven, if you don't forgive, you're not going to be forgiven. Is that how it is today, Eric? No! No, it isn't. No, it isn't. That's a work. Okay? That's the work. Your salvation then would be dependent upon you, whether or not you forgave someone. Okay? Today, in this dispensation, 
You don't have to forgive in order to be forgiven, to be forgiven. You don't. It doesn't, it doesn't work that way. Okay? It doesn't. All right? Um, you, should you forgive other people? Yeah, because if you don't, you're going to harbor a grudge and your fruit's going to stink and it's going to tear you up and you won't get over it and it'll be a broken record. Keep going, 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 going. It's not good for you. It really isn't. Okay? And also, that will affect your fruit. Okay? Okay? But this idea that today, in this dispensation, where we are saved by His grace through faith, through our faith, okay? Um, whether or not we forgive someone isn't, uh, isn't anything against our salvation, okay? You don't have to forgive in order to be forgiven in this dispensation today, okay? You don't. That's work salvation. That's what Eric Lionheart believes and teaches. Unfortunately, I know that. Like I said, I will find the video for that, and I think it's on the other channel. So watch out for that. Watch out for that. And see, from verses 23 into verse 26, okay, what are the dynamics? Okay, what are the dynamics? All right? In the context of the kingdom of heaven, another dispensation, you have to rightly divide the word of truth, my dear. Luke chapter 13. Luke chapter 13. Verses 6 on a verse 10. And he spake also this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. And he came and saw fruit thereon and found none. Like our Lord Jesus Christ when he went to and saw that specific fig tree and cursed it. Because there was no fruit on it. It was a reference onto that specific generation of Hebraic Jews. Okay? Then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years, and if I'm not mistaken, wasn't the uh, ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ on earth <laughs> three years? Then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree, and find none. Cut it down. Why cumbereth it the ground? And when the Son of Man is come, will he find faith on the earth? He, he, he yes, in a Phoenician woman, yes. But he came unto his own, and his own received him not. See, the fig tree that was cursed was that specific generation. And see, when the heretics come along, and yes, it is a reference on to Israel. They go off on that and saying that all Israel, all Israel is cursed. And there is a curse upon Israel right now today. Yes, there is. Yes, there is. But what they are saying is that God is done with Israel. <laughs> no. No. Let's continue. And he answering said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also, till I shall dig about it and dung it. And if it bear fruit, well. And if not, then after that thou shalt cut it down. I believe, referencing on to the time of Jacob's trouble, the last chance for the Hebraic Jews. Israel, we're going to see this today, Israel, Jewry in its entirety, will eventually be saved, will come to their Mashiach at great loss, at great casualty, okay? You ever witnessed to a Hebraic Jew before? Hmm? Have you? Hmm? Very challenging. Very difficult. Not the difficulty like trying to witness onto a Catholic who <laughs> think you guys, <laughs> we worship the same. <laughs> no, we don't. No, we don't. <laughs> no, we don't. Catholics are more difficult to witness to than to Hebraic Jews. 
Jews usually think we're cute at first. Like, oh, look at this Goyim, this, this Gentile. Oh, he's, oh, yeah, Christian. Yeah. But look at this Goyim. He thinks he's, and then talk to him about tying in the uh, Passover with the blood of the lamb and stuff like that. And then you irritate them without, without even trying. Okay. All right. Witnessing on to the Hebraic Jewish people is very challenging. But it can also be very rewarding. Witnessing on to Catholics is harder. It's easier witnessing on to an atheist. It's easier witnessing on to a Muslim than witnessing on to a Catholic. Yes. It it's harder witnessing on to a Christian than to said mentioned. Catholics are Christians, remember. Okay? So, again, the fig tree cursed was that specific generation. But see, during the time of Jacob's trouble, Jacob's trouble, Jacob is going to go through the fire again. And then out of that fire is going to come refined silver and gold. Jewry will eventually be saved. Eventually. Eventually. At a horrific, horrific cost. And go to James chapter 3 now. James chapter 3. James chapter 3, verses 11 on to verse 18. And you read about this in the book of Acts, about how Paul and Silas, or Paul and Barnabas, would go and preach the true gospel of the Mashiach, our Lord and Savior, our God, our Father, Jesus Christ. And then you would see the uh, Judaizers who rejected the Mashiach come around contradicting Paul and Barnabas, or Paul and Silas, I forget which one it was, okay? You see a lot of that. You see a lot of the, the Hasidim today, which deny uh, Jesus is their Messiah, okay? They are still trying to equate the Old Testament as salvifically doctrinal for us today, for them today, and it isn't. If culturally they want to do that stuff, that's different. Salvifically, that's not the case. So today in Israel, yes, Israel today, the nation of Israel is contrary to the Lord. It is. Not on the individual basis. I have known, I have met, I have fellowship, talked with, witnessed to, given the gospel to, prayed with saved Hebraic Jews of the Church of God, okay? It's on an individual basis. During the time of Jacob's, Jacob's trouble, it's going to be all about the Hebraic Jew, okay? All right? It's not for the purification of the Christian church, like Rome, like these people who tell you that the body of Christ is going through the time of Jacob's trouble. But there again, remember, Christians are going through the great tribulation. But James chapter 3, verses 11 on to verse 18. Doth a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can the fig tree my brethren, bear olive berries, either a vine, figs. So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh, either or, hot or cold. But because you are lukewarm, the Lord's going to puke you out of your mouth, out of His mouth. Okay. All right. What what is the is it salt water or fresh water coming out of Israel today? Now, you might think that this might be something derogatory toward the Hebraic Jewish people. No, no, it isn't. Um, we're going to read Romans 11. And in the description box will be the replacement theology videos. Please watch those. Okay? So let's continue. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him shew out of a good conversation 
his works with meekness of wisdom. What wisdom? Hmm. What wisdom? But if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. And as we're going to read in Romans 11 today, um, you know, us, gra our, us Gentiles were grafted in to their tree to make the Jew jealous. You King James Bible believing Christians, especially you, do you think the Hebraic Jews are jealous of you? Do you think? This is a rhetorical question, okay? Do you think Jewry, even Hebraic brethren of the Church of God, are jealous of that? <laughs> because when you say to a, a, a Jew, a Hebraic Jew, Christian, what do they equate it with? The Crusaders with the crosses on their tunics. The Christians who poked them with pokers to keep them away while they were debating the Jesuit priests. The Christians. Like Hitler. Hitler was an atheist. No, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. Adolf Hitler was a, was a Catholic. Adolf Hitler was a Catholic. I remember Kent Helvin did, and see, Kent Helvin, I believe, also is a Jesuit, okay? That guy, that guy and, and, and Tom, that idiot, of course, loves Kent Helvin, okay? But Kent Helvin is a Jesuit, okay? Who had some good stuff. Yes, he did, but the guy's a Jesuit, okay? All right? He did this whole thing, one of his creation science things, talking about how Hitler was an atheist. Hitler was a Catholic, Hitler was a Catholic. So, with the Hebraic Jew, when you say Christian to them, they equate all of that with Rome. And I am in 110% agreement with our dear Hebraic brethren of the Church of God who, and I used to have fellowship with one, specifically, it's like, yeah, I, I, I'm a Messianic Jew. Don't you, and the one guy who even said, it's like, don't you dare call me that. I get it. I understand. And I agree with them wholeheartedly. Okay? I agree with them wholeheartedly. And haven't you noticed how wise Christians are? You know, wise meaning in ways of the world. <laughs> they're, not, they're not wise in scripture to come out with their yea hath God said hmm. interesting let's continue but if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts glory not and lie not against the truth this wisdom demonstrated by Christianity and anything that is not of the church of God this wisdom descendeth not from above but is earthly Sensual, devilish. There's your Christianity for you right there. There it is for you, pal. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. Look at, look, seriously take a look at King James Bible believing Christianity. Bible believers. Uh, Jesuit James White referred to himself as a Bible believer. <laughs> okay. Uh, Stephen Anderson as well, apparently. I, I can't verify that, but I, I heard Jesuit James White say that. Okay. Look at King James Bible believing Christianity. You got them there, you got them there, you got them there. Oh, you got the ones up there, specifically. Earthly, sensual, devilish. It's not the faith that was once uh, delivered unto the saints. But the wisdom that is first above is first pure. Excuse me. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure. Then peaceable. The wisdom itself, which is what? The fear of the Lord. 
It's like, well, Brad, <laughs> you're not usually pretty gentle or peaceable. I know that. I know that. And remember, the gentleness that is referred to in that context is not, not, don't scare them. We don't want to scare them. No, the gentle is you don't take the whole scripture and try to cram it down someone's throat all in one sitting. I've done that before. I've blown it on several occasions because, because of that. Be aware of it, okay? But the fear of the Lord itself, this, but the wisdom, fear of the Lord, that is from above, fear of the Lord, there it is, is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. See, unless you're from the coast of England, we people, we persons, spirits, own body, we have moments of hypocrisy. There's going to be a lot of videos in the description box. Okay? We, we have moments of where we're hypocrites. Okay? The fear of the Lord itself, which is the wisdom being described there, there's, there's none of that in the fear of the Lord. The fear, the fear of the Lord is clean. Okay? Actually, one second, please. One of my, the uh, portion of scripture that my wife has uh, down pat, Psalm 19, verses 11, on to uh, verse 11. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold. Yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. More, moreover, by them is thy servant warned. And in keeping of them, there is great reward. Where do you find the statutes, the judgments, the testimonies, the laws, and all that? Where do you find all of that? The scripture. James 3 again. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them. That make peace. Isaiah chapter 5. Isaiah chapter 5. Isaiah chapter 5. God is not done with Israel. Okay? God is not done with Israel. Israel is the apple of God's eye. Okay? You have to remember, we, us Gentiles, the mystery is that we have part of the tree of Israel. We are not Jews. We are not Hebrews. We are Gentiles grafted into the tree of the Jew. Okay, we're, we're, we're going to read that today. Okay, but God is not done with Israel by a long shot. Okay, by a long shot. The body of Christ has not replaced Israel. Church has not replaced Israel. And see, that's what guys like Stephen Anderson and Roman Catholicism, his mother, teach you. Isaiah chapter 5, verses 1 and verse 7. Now will I sing to my well-beloved a song of my beloved, touching his vineyard. My well-beloved hath a vineyard in a very fruitful field. And he fenced it and gathered out the stones thereof and planted it with the choicest vine, and built a tower in the midst of it, and also made a winepress therein. And he took, and he looked that it should bring forth grapes, and it brought forth wild grapes. Wild grapes. And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge, I pray you, betwixt me and my vineyard. Yesterday's video, we saw the comparison of how uh, Israel, under the law, 
is the was the equivalent of what we, the body of Christ, the Church of the Living Ground, uh, Living God, which is the pillar and ground of the truth, is to be today. Okay. Judge, I pray you, between me, betwixt me and my vineyard. Catholic, all of you, judge between what Rome says and what God says in the scriptures. Judge between what Christianity says and what the scriptures say. Judge between the yea hath God said with God hath said. Okay? The way you serve the Lord reflects him. And all these disgusting Christians, not all of them, excuse me, not all of them. There are, there are people out there who are our brethren who want to call themselves Christians. It's like, dude, fine. Fine, that's whatever. Whatever you, whatever, okay? But, but like, in its, in its entirety, Christianity is disgusting, okay? Judge between Christianity and the perfect standard. Let's see, what does Christianity do? Which one, well, find one that suits you because it's all about you people. What could, I, what could have been done more to my vineyard that I have not done in it? The Lord's given us, we, 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 we've got his word. Uh, if you've gone the way of the cross and he saved you and sealed you, you have the Lord in you. You have his word. What, what, what? What else does he need to give you? Well, if I had a Mercedes, and I'm, shut up. What could have what could have been done more to my vineyard that I have not done in it? Read uh, what is that Ezekiel sixteen or eighteen? It's like I took you and I gave you food and I gave you bread and I gave you all this stuff and then you turned around and then you went after Baal. Wherefore, when I looked that it should bring forth grapes, good fruit, brought it forth wild grapes. Bad fruit. Wild, not like crazy, silly. Wild of uncertainty. Of its own. Just willy-nilly. Anywhere. And now go to. I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will take away the hedge thereof. And it shall be eaten up. And break down the wall thereof. And it, sh and it shall be trodden down. Talking about his, his harsh judgment against the apple of his eye. Okay? And I will lay it waste. And it shall not be pruned nor digged. But there shall come up briars and thorns which choke the word. The bramble from yesterday. I will also command the clouds that they rain, no rain upon it. And out of uh, his belly shall flow living uh, water, uh, streams of living water. Okay? All right? In a dry and parched land where people are not hearing the words of the Lord, not being washed in the water of the word, and not even enjoying the sincere milk of the word. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel and the men of Judah, his pleasant vine. And he looked for judgment, but behold, oppression for righteousness, but behold, a cry. He came to the, he came to the fig tree looking for fruit. He came unto his own and his own received him not. And he found none in that specific generation. Deuteronomy 32. Deuteronomy 32. Verses 28 on to verse 33. And also the Holocaust. I'm going to have a lot of links in the description box. Deuteronomy 32, 28 on to verse 33. On to verse 33. For they are a nation void of counsel. 
neither is there any understanding in them, departing from evil. Oh, that they were wise, that they understood this, that they would consider their latter end. How should one chase a thousand, and two put ten thousand to flight, except their capital, our rock, had sold them, and that rock was Christ. Okay? And the Lord had shut them up. For their lowercase r rock is not as our uppercase rock. Even our enemies themselves mean judges. For their vine is of the vine of Sodom and of the fields of Gomorrah. Their grapes are grapes of gall. Their clusters are bitter. Verse 33, their wine is the poison of dragons and the cruel venom of asps. And Zyklon B, uh, that was used in the crematoria of the Holocaust, one of the components was comparable onto the venom, venom of asps. <coughs> Romans 11. Romans 11. Um, it's, it's, it's full of wonder that people can be replacement theology and yet read the book of Romans chapter 11. Well, how do they get away with it? Number one, the ignorance of Scripture. Number two, you got these heretic devil scumbags, free gracers, who come around with the, well, Romans 9, 10, and 11 are written for the Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. <laughs> and people are not searching the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Okay? You're taught to trust in what you see, not walk by faith. No wonder. But Romans chapter 11. Verses 1 on to verse 11. I say then, hath God cast away his people? God forbid. I mean, simply, when you come across someone, well, God's done with Israel forever. He, uh, the church has replaced Israel. I say then, hath God cast away his people? God forbid. Well, no, there's place for the Hebraic Jew within the church. This is true. This is true. But see, it's the time of Jacob's trouble, not the time, like Rome says, church's trouble. The church of the living God, the body of Christ, ends with this dispensation at come up hither. Okay? All right? Let's continue. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin, God hath not cast away his people, which he foreknew. What ye not what the scripture ha saith of Isaiah? Ah. Excuse me. God hath not cast away his people, which he foreknew. What ye not what the scripture saith of Elias, how he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets and dig down thine altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. But what saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men, seven, very significant, 7,000 men there. And he's quoting from 1 Kings chapter 18 or 19. Okay? All right. So let's continue. But what saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Even so then, at this present time, there is a remnant according to the election of grace, context, context, election, context, yes, reference on because what, what, what? He is talking about the Hebraic Jews, yes, but see, this is not written for the time of Jacob's trouble. It's written doctrinally for us today in this dispensation when you come across Jesuit coadjutor heretic free grace devils and infiltrators like Stephen Anderson and the Roman Catholic Church. Okay? All right? And if by grace, then it is no more of works, 
Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for. But the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. Again, context. Okay? Election. Verse 7. Election of grace. Okay? Reference on to the Hebraic people. Verse 7. Israel, the Hebraic people. Okay? But the election, not in that verse context, not reference on to Israel. What is that a reference on to? The Calvinists? No. The election. The election. God chose, elected the way of the cross. You go the way of the cross, you're a part of the elect. The elect way of the cross. That's what that means. Okay? Watch out for these devil Calvinists. Okay? But the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. According as it is written, God hath given them the spirit of slumber. Lord K says, something imparted. Why? Because they've already made their choice, just like Pharaoh. Okay? You want the fake? You want the lie? You want to lay and receive? Fine, God will give it to you. And then the one who will answer your prayers is Satan. Okay? According as it is written, God hath given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear, unto this day. And David saith, let their table be made a snare, and a trap, and a stumbling block, and a recompense with the sea unto them. Let their eyes be darkened, that they may not see, and bow down their back away. Hmm. Hmm. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid. And here, and here's, and this is the verse that so many of these anti-Semitic replacement theology heretics hate. But rather, through their fall, salvation has come unto the Gentiles for to provoke them unto jealousy. Remember what we read in uh, James chapter 3? Hmm? Bitter envying and strife and stuff like that. Okay? Hmm. And fall. A just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. Uh, uh, riseth up again. Excuse me. But the wicked fall into mischief. Again. Safe people can fall. False converts. Infiltrators. Lost people. Fall away. Mr. Fig. You heretic. Okay? So, right there, the purpose of the Gentiles was that we would be brought into the tree of the Jew to make them jealous. And as I have already ranted to you about, do, do, you, do you Christians especially you King James Bible-believing Christians who purport, who purport to be in favor of Israel. Not, not what, not the nonsensical, Hasidic nonsense, crazy stuff that's going on right now in Israel, okay? The land belongs to Israel. They, 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 have, a, they have a contract. <laughs> Okay, they have a contract. It's written down for us in here. Okay, um, the land of Israel, you know, that land over there belongs onto the Hebraic Jews, to Israel. And we as saints, we support that. It's their land. God gave it to them by promise. Okay? Don't support what they are doing, but the fact that they're in their land and it's given to them by promise which you can find in the scripture, and that they are still the apple of God's eye, that is what the saints support. But see, you Christians, and you King James Bible-believing Christians, your testimony of your adolescent behavior, of your cliquish, high school-esque mentality, What 
what, what do you think Israel, the Hebraic Jews, think of your Christianity? What do you think they think? Do you care? <laughs> Skipping now to verses 25 unto the close. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part. Aha! Bingo! Not permanent. Temporary. In part. Not all the way. Is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles become in. This is the time of the Gentiles because we've been grafted into the... I know that appears in the book of Revelation, but this is, you know, us Gentiles have been grafted in to the tree of the Jew, okay, until the fullness of the Gentiles we come in, okay? Okay? And so all Israel shall be saved. That remnant of grace... Hmm? During the time of Jacob's trouble, after the mark of the beast, after the horrific atrocities that that man of sin, who's also going to be a Hebrew, Satan's going to have to become what he hates the most, the Hebrew people, okay? After that, the scant number of Hebraic Jews that survive, Israel in its entirety will be saved. As it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes. But as touching the election, God chose Israel and has not permanently abandoned them. And that, that's contrary. That's contrary to a ton of scripture. They are beloved for the father's sakes. Oh, the uh, Jesuit fathers? No. The fathers of the rabbinic council of the Hasidim? No. The fathers, plural, sakes. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. God's not done with Israel. The church has not replaced Israel. The Lord rebuke you. For as ye in times past have not believed God, yet now obtain mercy through their unbelief. Even so... Have these also now not believed that through your mercy they also may obtain mercy? Think about that. They are enemies. Uh, what does that say? Verse 28. They are enemies for your sakes. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes. Roll that around in your brain case for a while and ponder, think of the gravity of what that actually means. And then right away, it's like, well, 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 <laughs> well, because of verse 20, or verse 19 and 20. Thou wilt say then, the branches were broken off that I might be crafted in. Well, because of unbelief, they were bro broken off. And thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. For if God spared not the natural branches, Israel, take heed, lest he also spare not thee. For God, verse 32, for God hath concluded them all in unbelief, that he might have mercy upon all. Because under the law, it was just the Hebraic Jews. 
You wanted to be right with God under the law? You could be. But you had to go specifically through the Hebraic Jews and adapt to that specific thing. Okay? Today, similar. You want to be right with God? You have to go the elect way of the cross. But see, it's available to everybody. You can go anywhere. You don't need to go to a Jesuit priest. You don't need to go to a stinking building. Please don't. Okay? Oh, the depth of the riches, both of wisdom, of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. Because remember, Peter, they were like, uh, you know, when they, the Gentiles in uh, Acts chapter 10, he's like, it's like, wow, God has let the Gentiles be part of the church of God, okay, of the body of Christ. One body, not two, okay. Wow. Wow. Oh, the depth of the riches. For who hath known the mind of the Lord? We have the mind of Christ, meaning he lives in us, but uh, are we smarter than God? Uh, John MacArthur thinks so. Uh, uh, what's his name? Jesuit James White thinks so. Peter Ruckman thought so. Don't get thou shush. I love you. Shush. At his old age, that guy got as arrogant as Gene Kim and Robert Breaker is. Give me a break. Where do you think they got it from? For who hath known the mind of the Lord, or who hath been his counselor? Or who hath first given to him, and it shall be recompensed with an S, verb, unto him again? For of him, and through him, and to him are all things, to whom be glory forever. Amen. Isaiah 54. Isaiah 54. We're almost done. Isaiah 54. Isaiah 54. Israel will be saved out of it. Sing, O barren, thou that didst not, didst not bear. Break forth into singing and cry aloud, thou that didst not travail with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, saith the Lord. Enlarge the place of thy tent, and let them, let them stretch forth the curtains of thine habitations. Spare not, lengthen thy cords, and strengthen thy stakes. For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left, and thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles, and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. Fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed, neither be thou confounded. For thou shalt not be put to shame. For thou, shalt, for thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth. And shall not remember the reproach of thy widowhood anymore. The times when Israel walked contrary to the Lord. For thy maker is thine husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. And thy redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. The God of the whole earth shall he be called. For the Lord hath called thee as a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit, Lord K. S. And a wife of youth, when thou wast refused, saith thy God. For a small moment have I forsaken thee. For a small moment. But with great mercies will I gather thee. In a little wrath I hid my face from thee for a moment, but with everlasting kindness will I have mercy on thee, saith the Lord thy Redeemer. For this is as the waters of Noah unto me. For as I have sworn that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth, so have I sworn that I would not be wroth with thee, nor rebuke thee. For the mountain shall depart, again, a reference on the types of people, and the hills be removed. But my kindness 
shall not depart from thee. Neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, saith the Lord that hath mercy on thee. O thou afflicted! This is clearly talking about Israel, obviously. Tossed with tempest and not comforted, behold, I will lay thy stones with fair colors and lay thy foundations with sapphires. Uh, reference of um, uh, in the, um, the New Jerusalem and the, the colors, the gates of the pearls and carbuncles and stuff like that, I think. And I will make thy windows of the gates and thy gates of carbuncles. <laughs> right there, excuse me. <laughs> and all thy borders of pleasant stones. Talking about the New Jerusalem. And all thy children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of thy children. In righteousness shalt thou be established. Thou shalt be far from oppression, for thou shalt not fear, and from terror, for it shall not come near thee. Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against me shall fall for thy sake. Right there, verse 15, reference at, uh, after the thousand years are up and Satan goes out and gathers all Gog and Magog and to come against Jerusalem, uh, they, uh, they shall uh, surely, behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me, meaning, you know, that he didn't call them all together. He's allowing it. So the final destruction, you know, after Satan is let loose, you know, Behold, verse 16, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire. Reference to fire again. And that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. And I have created the waster to destroy. The waster to destroy. Satan is doing the th judgments. Satan is being allowed to reign as a form of judgment. Okay, today, Satan is being allowed to wreak havoc as he is for judgment's sake. Not that the Lord and him are in cahoots. None of that. Okay, you read Job chapter 1 and 2. Okay, but Satan is allowed to do what he is for judgment. And when the body of Christ isn't on the earth, okay, and, of course, a verse that uh, Christians like to uh, cheapen and make into a cliché. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment shalt thou condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is of me. The righteousness is of me. And, you know, today, um, <laughs> there are weapons that are formed that are prospering against the body of Christ, aren't they? Aren't they? The gates of hell have not prevailed against the body of Christ. Of course not, no. But um, this is their time. Our voices are being silenced. The Titanic is sinking. Finally, Jeremiah 30, verses 6 on to verse 8, and we'll be done. Ask ye now, and see whether a man doth travail with child. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins as a woman in travail, and all faces are turned into paleness. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob, Israel's trouble, the time that is coming after this dispensation. But he shall be saved out of it. For it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off thy neck, and will burst thy bonds, and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him, but they shall serve the Lord their God, and David their king, the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, during the kingdom of heaven, whom I will raise up unto them. So, 
that is going to be it for this video, dear brethren, dear saints, friends and foes. Um, God is not done with Israel. The church has not, <laughs> the church has not replaced Israel. Replacement theology is vile, evil, disgusting, and grotesque. And it is not hardly scriptural. So that is going to be it for this video. Thank you for watching this if you do. Hopefully you all learn something. There are going to be a lot of links. There are going to be a lot of links in the description box. So if you have questions, check out the links. Okay? So please keep us in your prayers. We need help. We need all the help we can get. Today is the 27th, and we got three days, to, including today, till the end of the month. So please keep us in your prayers. We, we need a lot of help. <laughs> so thank you for watching. If you do, we love you. We'll see you in the next video.